Hi. Well, day something, four, five, on this journey. Uh, I was actually, uh, unfortunately, I haven't had much time to work on the on, on this project, but at least progress. And the progress came, comes in, in various ways. In this way, I got caught in a PEBCAC error. Problem exists between keyboard and chair in the computing world. Or ID10T error. I'll put the description there, you understand. Uh, basically, well, I was trying to diagnose the amplifier just to be sure that if it was working or not. And, well, it's working. And it's working because of an error <laughs> that I did. It's not easy to find. So I, I'm not totally off the hook, but it was, it was interesting nonetheless. Let's dive right in. All right, this is the overall schematics of the equipment. Okay, so basically what happens is that this is the, uh, this is the board with the switches that I showed in previous, the previous video, which also has all the inputs here, the tape two, tape one auxiliary, and so on and so forth. So in the signal path, I was trying to identify, obviously, problems on the signal path so I could actually be able to rule out any segments that could be actually defective uh, and trying to see if why the signals from this board were not able to reach the main, the two main boards here, which are the two power amplifier boards, one per channel. What happened is this. I was actually following this. I'm not sure if you guys remember. I actually measured... Uh, following the traces here, I measured the volume control here, which is an also in the tone control board. Uh, this is actually interesting. There's another construction detail that I'm going to show you later. But I was measuring the voltages in here with the multimeter on the tone control. And this board, this tone control board here, actually goes through the, si the signal goes through here with all the filtering. Um, bass and treble. There's balance somewhere in here as well. Oh, balance is at the end. So basically it goes to bass and treble here, all the filtering. Then it has the muting switch. And then you have the balance control right here. And the volume control is somewhere in here as well. Uh, the late, yeah, the other section of the volume control are these two pots in here. It's a little bit small. But this is what I also was able to measure later. With the multimeter and this segment here goes not after the volume typically in, a, in an amplifier uh, this goes straight to the two main amplifiers because that's what you need right uh, you need the volume control controlling the inputs to the two main amplifiers however i notice following the schematics that it reaches this little module here call it coupler let me zoom in on it so this module here comes a signal from the volume control and there's actually two switches. One it's mode and other is coupler. And I was really struggling to find where these switches were, but then I noticed something. Here are the jacks for main in and pre out. <laughs> these are the jacks that were actually behind the equipment. I'm gonna actually show a picture of those of those jacks. And this damn switches here who are actually there right beside those two those two connectors as well in the rear of the equipment the mode is fine it's it's just a switch that doesn't matter it basically means that you actually you actually enabling or disabling some dc blocking capacitors from the input of the amplifier but the coupler is actually a switch that disconnects the tone control from the power amplifier so what I have here is simply the signal was never reaching out the power amplifiers. Sure enough, turning on the coupler, which needs to be in the on position. Turning on the coupler, there you go. Then you have the power amplifier working again. So let me show you this in practice. Well, now, proper volume, still low, and then that's what you get. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. 
So it's pretty loud, okay? I'm not sure if the microphone will do justice. There's a little bit of distortion, but most important, this volume control has zero scratches. It's in absolute pristine condition. Similarly to the balance uh, potentiometer as well, which is a great thing because these things tend to be very, very difficult to clean. So it's perfect. All the panel, I already did some testing. All the panel, you have also the base. None of the controls here, the rotary controls, have scratches, which is awesome. The only things that have scratch, they are scratch are the switches. Sometimes you, got, you, you put the switches either for the base or the treble. You can, you can turn on and off. It has a, a mini equalizer in here. The other switch that actually had a lot of, 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 of scratches is the auto muting. Actually, I forgot. This is not in the 0 dB mark. It's actually in the minus 20. That's the 0 dB mark. Meaning there's an attenuator in here. Uh, and also, so this switch was very scratchy. Sometimes you even lost the channel or something like that. So definitely these switches I'll have to, um, I'll have to uh, to repair to repair no to clean, but it's, these are a lot easier to clean, uh, and not with WD40 never. <laughs> so basically, these switches are fine. Uh, are actually need cleanup. These switches here don't need cleanup. Basically, they are not they are not dirty in any stretch of imagination. The phone the input selector and all that. There's no scratches whatsoever. So the switches are in excellent shape. These three here. So basically, that's what I um, that's what I, I, I reached uh, this. So the other th uh, uh, important aspect as well. Well, the phones are working fine as well. I just need to test the B speakers, but it's just a, a matter of a switching. In A plus B, I it, it just adds the two, so it doesn't. There's no detriment on the switch itself. So overall, amplifier is working well. And what is the important bit is that. I can proceed to the to the to the steps of restoring or at least getting to a point where I need to I simply can replace the capacitor so they, I can give extra life to this guy here but I don't have to chase any actual problems so any defective components or anything like that so overall this is an incredible piece of equipment lasting <laughs> I don't know 30 years perhaps 40 years perhaps and it's still in excellent shape so perfect 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 uh ending i'll i'll proceed and now will be a lot easier my work i won't have to chase a defect all right so see you next time with hopefully a, a more complete restoration and cleanup of the equipment Thank you.